In a little industrial city called Puerto Ma, Chile, I met up with my friend Vicente, who told us he was going to take us to a fossil forest of alerse trees. Alerses, Fitzroya cuprosoides, are distant relatives of redwood that can live for upwards of 5,000 years. So we walked on this rickety dock, paid a dollar to the dinghy captain, and hopped on a little boat with a struggling motor that ferried us a quarter mile across the bay to the shore of a little island. As we approached the little island, I could see that it was covered in a lot of the same non-native eucalyptus and radiata pine garbage that's so prevalent throughout southern Chile. It was hard to imagine what was growing here 42,000 years ago and what it might have looked like. Suddenly, Vicente noticed some spitting clams. <laughs> It's a gusher. Oh, what'd you find? Oh, that looks nice. The walk across the island was a short one, and I noticed that the tiles on almost all the housing were made out of alerse wood because it doesn't rot. Redwood family, it don't rot. You got all those tannins in there. Myrtaceae, ugni molinae. Myrtaceous flowers, many stamens. Style in the center. Five petals and a squishy fruit uh, when it matures. I think you get a couple yellow variants in there. Beautiful basalt cobbles, rounded. Kind of reminds me just of like the coastal Washington. After a gentle 10 minute walk across the island, we arrived at the beach where the fossil forest lays. And what I was about to see would absolutely blow my mind. Welcome to another episode of Crime Pace of Botany Dust, and I'm down here in Puerto Montt, Chile. 41 degrees latitude south. Puerto Montt's really nice. This little industrial working class town really warms my heart. There's a massive volcano behind that too. It just dipped behind that cloud. But we're down here looking at a really nice display. Really nice charcuterie board full of elegantly rounded black basalt cobbles. But even cooler than that, we have this 42,000 year old stump of Fitzroya cuprosoides, the Alerse tree. In the redwood family, Cuprosaceae, it's basically a South American redwood. And the only reason you can see this right now and that it's not buried underwater is because in the 1960s there was a large earthquake, one of the largest ever recorded in recent history, that literally lifted up the ground 10 or 20 feet, making these accessible at low tide. You still gotta come out here at low tide to see these but uh, that's when these were discovered in the 1960s. They've been dated at 42,000, 42 to 44,000 years. And the reason they're all blown off at the top, at least what I assume, is that one of the three volcanoes, three or four volcanoes that surround this bay on this island, we're actually on an island in the bay outside of Puerto Montt. One of those volcanoes blew up 42,000 years ago, snapped all of these off at the base, and uh, buried them in ash, I assume, because they're all in the same layer, all up and down this, this beach, this basalt beach right here. They're all in the same stratigraphic layer. Buried them in ash, and they've been tombed ever since. There's a couple down there that are laying on their side. But uh, they've basically been buried in, in uh, ash, which then lithified, turned to this silty mudstone. And, uh, and then, of course, when the glaciers melted, you had a glaciation, then the glaciers melted again, sea levels rose, they were underwater for I don't know 20 30,000 years God only knows you know and then thank thank God the tectonic forces from that Nazca plate same reason we have those volcanoes out there the Nazca plate subduction zone just off the coast they were uplifted and now we can come out here and check them out this is a really dense wood this is again this is like a redwood it's a much denser redwood they grow incredibly slowly they need upwards of three meters or 10 feet of rain a year, as well as ample sunlight. They kind of grow in these boggy conditions. And so they grow really slowly, the wood's a lot denser, and they just don't rot. This thing's been underwater for how many thousands of years, it just has not rotted. It's a really dense and beautiful wood. All right. The growth rings are incredibly close together. We were looking at stumps yesterday that had been cut. Stumps that had been cut that had fallen across a path. You could just the beautiful red color to them. Bright red. Like a deep, a deep burgundy brick. 
You can tell these haven't been washed up here, obviously, because they're literally entombed in the rock right there. There's a log coming out. There's another log. Of course, there's no alerses on this island anymore. It's mostly invasive bullshit. Now you got a fuchsia right there. That's native. But uh, it's mostly invasive bullshit. You got Monterey cypress up there. Ra the dreaded radiata pine, source of uh, so much bad home despot lumber. Big box store lumber, you know, to build all those houses that are going to come down in 30 or 40 years. You know, to what basically what America's building its suburbs out of. No alerts here right now. Oh, you got a blue gum eucalyptus too. But 42,000 years ago, this was all a dense alerse forest with a plethora of other species. Many of the species that we've been seeing uh, a little bit more inland in the coastal mountains. Wild shit to see. 42,000 year old wood. They certainly don't make them like that anymore. How long would radiata pine last? <laughs> like a fucking decade. I'll probably last longer than some of the radiata pine out there. Can you see the, yeah, look, you could see the growth rings. What is that? The growth rings are like a millimeter, maybe even less than a millimeter apart. But you can see this is the root system. And this is just like a muddy, lithified clay. You can see this is the root system of alerse. They just don't rot. It's like a much denser redwood. Just as many tannins and just as red as Sequoia sempervirens, the redwood tree, but much denser due to their much slower growth. Absolutely insane. There's no alerses here anymore. I don't know if they were logged or uh, what happened to them. I assume they were logged because most of the alerses in Chile were logged and the ones that weren't were only saved because they were too remote or on too steep of a slope to safely get to but totally nuts man look at that how old was that tree? what did this look like back then too Jesus Christ what was here you can still see that hint of red in that wood the tide's gonna come back in in about 40 minutes start coming back in but you can see this is this, the waves would be up here so this would all be underwater this must have been a millennia or two old one or two thousand years old you could see how big it must have been the root system was extensive it was probably three feet diameter these trees grow so slow and now what do you got here you got monterey pine you got monterey cypress blue gum eucalyptus bunch of invasive bullshit That seaweed smells really good. You know, it makes me fiend for a nice seaweed salad. This must have been a massive one. You can see the roots are basically entombed in the rock. God, that's so cool. <laughs> I've seen a lot of cool shit in the last few days. As we've traveled throughout southern Chile documenting plants, but a fossil forest. Well, not quite fossilized, but you know what I mean. A graveyard of alerse trees, some of the oldest living things in the world. From the Pleistocene, it's pretty cool. Yeah, they got dug fir. You got alerses down here, but you plant dug fir. People always want to plant what's on the other side of the fence. You know, humans are never satisfied with what they got. It's hilarious. Man, you got a lot of nice rocks here. You know, I'll stuff up to my 52 pound limit in my suitcase. God, that's a massive one. Look at that, holy shit. You got a nice spread on that. It's still got that red tint to it. It's just laden with tannins. Look at that. What a beast that is, man. That's nuts. That's fucking nuts. Take me back to the Pleistocene. You know what? What caused them to snap in half? I bet it was a tsunami or something. They finally did it, you know? Got a big earthquake. It just came in, snapped them like toothpicks. Look at that beautiful wood. Gorgeous. It's got to be 16 feet, 16 foot root flare. And it's just entombed in the rock. I wonder what happened here. Just got like a plank sticking out. Is that a root or what? God, look at the color of that too. That's gorgeous, man. You can't tell what's rock and what's wood.
Oh, this is just a fallen tree. I see what's going on there. Vertical, then flipped horizontal. Uh, probably before being cemented in that rock. Anyways, gotta weigh 90 pounds, if not more. Yeah, it's just cemented in that mud. God, that's crazy, man. You can see the carbon, the dark color leaching into the uh, the clay. 40,000 years you were buried. It just looks like peatlands. You got Murdiola, of course, Mertesi, forming a nice little mat. See all kinds of roots sticking out of this layer right here. Another massive trunk. Yeah, this must have been a big one. You can see it got blasted down before it got buried. What's this dog pissed off about? What are you, what are you mad about? What do you want, buddy? It's a public beach. You don't own the beach, huh? I don't know what he's pissed about. I keep seeing this algae everywhere. It looks like a used condom. I feel like I'm hanging out in a park or something, you know? I mean, I don't know what parks you hang out in, but the ones I hang out in in my city sometimes, you know, got used profos just uh, thrown behind a bench or something, you know, for illicit things that went on there. And look at that. Just, <laughs> it's just buried in the, this, this mud, this silty, silty seashore mud. God, that's so cool. Little hints at the past, little glimpses of the past. Nice like it. Oh, this is an interesting one. I've seen this in northern Chile and in Tasmania. I grew it from seed once too. Goudinia radicans. You can see it's got a little pollen presenter. I think that's called an indusium in this family. Asterales is the order, Goudiniaceae is the family, primarily southern hemisphere. Family, I, I, are there any Northern Hemisphere members of this family? They're big in Australia. Scaviola is one of them. Bunch of them in Australia. But yeah, you get that little fuzzy. See, it's just it's it's five corolla lobes splayed out into a little fan. And then you got that, uh, that pollen secondary pollen presentation, that little uh, indusium right there. Glabrous spatulate leaves, and it just likes to creep along the. Uh, the substrate very salt tolerant and uh, they tend to like wet feet oh there you go to see you can see a volcano behind that that must have been what uh, I bet that's what happened they got blown over they got got a volcanic blast and it just ripped them apart blew their tops off laid them down and uh, that's how they ended up here and that's probably what I wonder if this is a volcanic mud or or what I, I'm assuming it's like a lithified Volcanic ash, maybe. Yeah, it does. It does seem quite powdery. It'd be interesting to look at it under a microscope and see what it is. I bet it is tough. I bet it's a tufaceous layer. How else are you gonna blow down a big tree like that and so many at once? You can see it's just. And then of course you got quick burial too, so that uh, that'll solve that. I bet this whole layer is just tufaceous sediment. Volcanic ash blown out of a nearby massive fumarole. Like a little zit. Thank you, Nazca Plate. It's that subduction of the Nazca Plate that did all this. That enabled us to see this here today. Anyway, that's all I got. Have a great day. Go fuck yourself. Bye.